Hi, this is a, another comfy video. This one is about a couple of experimental methods. I mean, it's a development that's come out of other, other things I've worked at. What it's to do with is the inputs I am making to the AI and what control I have over them and trying to increase the control I have over them, essentially. So, And I have a few avenues for that. So I have, I'll do the simplest one first. I have the text, the, the, the um, information I I am giving to the AI in word format. I have in this case image to image the image I am putting in we'll get to this lot later and then perhaps I should say next the LORAs which are influencing the attention layers of the model as it is being processed in the sampler and then further we have the conditioning which is the text here as part of that and also we have a control net which is also in the line of conditioning. So the conditioning gets applied at every step, or rather this one doesn't because it starts at one and stops at six, and I can wait it. So this video is about gaining more control over this area here, the control net, and this area here, the image that goes in. So this image supplies the basis of the noise from which the final image here is made. So we'll start down here and we'll bring in the image I started with. This is the image I started with, quite straightforward. And this is the depth map made from this image. And when that goes through the sampler, it comes out like this. And that's with no prompt for illustration or anything. If I prompt for illustration, because I want to make an illustration, this is what I get. So this is my control in the conditioning. So I, my prompt has changed and it's changed from this, a sort of rather ragged photo, to this, which is a little bit nearer to what I want. And then I add a LoRa, an illustration LoRa, so a French illustrator called Mong, and another a painting LoRa to, to give it more of an all painted feel. Wilhelm van Elst, the Dutch painter and then we're in this territory which is fine initially for style and this is where the law is slapped in at one and, and no adjustments so where I can gain some control is in the over the image that's going in now I, I can dodge to and fro Photoshop but it's it's really inconvenient so I've made a, a line of nodes that imitate the main things I go and do in Photoshop. Not all of them, but uh, the really important ones. So I need to explain what happens here. So we have our initial image, which I pixelize, tint, we'll forget about this one for now, tint, color correct, and this is the image that goes into the sampler. And you see it's pixelated. So what I've done is reduce the amount of certainty in this image. And that results in, and this is a color gradation, because I want it to grade from cool to warm, which I am blending over the top of this image. So you can see we've got a, a change from blue to a warmer over there. And that results in this, which as you can see, has quite a nice mood. Before we put the grade, so that's just the tint, the blue tint. That's with the grade. It makes quite a difference. That's the pixelated image with the grade over it. The next thing that's been done is I wanted a river. You, you may notice that the early versions had no river and now it has a river. So in order to make that, I edited the photo very crudely, as you can see, crude photoshopping. I photoshopped a river in and I also photoshopped the depth. It, very, very simply. I, I just made a depth map of, of new depth map of the of this of this image and that came out like that and th that gives these are different seeds of the same same image so if we go so that's that um whole run so there's i'll go through it once more from start to finish there's the initial image well this is the edited one where i've got the river in which gets pixelized to break it up into blocks and reduce the photographic certainty of it it gets a tint and this this is all the great thing with all of this lot is I can change anything in here. I can change pixel size so I can degrade this image or increase and I can I can mix in more or less of the uh, or, of the gradation or change the gradation indeed. And then I finally got the colour correct to fine tune. There's actually not much being done with here. I've taken 
some of the saturation out and increase the gamma that's all but you can run this module by itself if you set these other ones to never and it, you, you can work on in this little zone completely i shall demonstrate maybe oh, i shall demonstrate here we go so you can set these to never so if i change for example the pixel size to 18 there it is larger larger still warmer oh that's a bit much <laughs> cooler uh, and i can shift the hue i can shift the saturation so i have tons of con tons of control and in this and and i can work on this image let's go back down i'll, I'll forget and wonder why it's all gone horribly wrong i think i was about 12. so i can work on how this image looks and uh, and to get this image to have the feel i want of the final image and then we do the same thing up here. So I am also pixelating this and I'm I'm making an image level adjustment. So with this, I can adjust how the depth map, how deep it is, how how far you can see the pixelated one there. I, I, I can decide what the black levels are. So I've altered the black levels. So the lowest black level is 55, it would normally be naught. The white, top white level is full white, and you always have the mid level at the number between the two. So it needs to be equidistant between the two. You can change it, but you get a strange flattening effect, which uh, it might be useful for some things, but it, it produces it produces a squashed castle. <laughs> I can see I can see it being a, an effect for fun, but but essentially I've got control over my depth map, and I can push. You see how this tower here is darker and that means I've pushed that tower away. By making this darker I've pushed the bridge further away from us. And then this goes into another pixelize because I, 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 I want to degrade this image a bit as well. And But the, you can control the pixelization and so you can decide exactly how much you want to change the image. So. I think that covers it. I'll put a workflow in so you can have a play with it. The things you can play with essentially are changing the tones of the depth map, pixelization here, obviously the LoRa's and the, we're all used to this, the LoRa's and, and the text encode, that's all part of your armory. And you can edit your input image both in photoshop but once out of photoshop you can control the feel and mood and color and tint of this image so these these are just a few of the variations i got playing around yeah, this one is a different time of year gone to autumn so it makes it it makes it very easy to control the degree of change you're getting because the problem i find with ai is if you have too much control then you you miss out on the on the weird imaginings that the AI brings to the table. If you don't have enough control, you get what I call image salad, <laughs> just uh, sort of random random stuff. Whereas here uh, we get a nice variation of image to any degree we want, really. And because of the setup, we uh, just about every generation has something to say for it. The occasional one where, where goes the one of the illustrators does a lot of people occasionally a pointy eared fairy appears instead of a tower. But uh, but other than that, it's pretty controllable. Okay, I hope that's interesting. It's an experimental thing, really. If anyone um, if anyone has uh, any bright ideas how to to extend the process, I'd be glad to hear in the comments. The workflow will be down there anyway, so you can put it into comfy and have a play. Okay, thank you very much.